Okay, okay. So uh, we are here with uh, Dave Powell and Mark Holiday from Castanark. Um, so let's uh, let me, let mm. me take you somewhere else now. Mark Holiday, uh, I have a question for you. How does the musician? I don't know if you're a graphic designer or at least you're a painter. Or so I read, and a storyteller and a writer. How do you share the time? I mean. Uh, because I think the, the, the artwork, the, the illustrations on the cover uh, of the records are very important. Uh, how and when did you begin uh, painting and all that? Ooh, uh, I began painting. I always had an interest in painting as a, as a, as a child, really. And, and I used to, um, when people, when, when I left school, when people were going, young kids were going out, you know, finding themselves going to pubs and, and things like that. I didn't do any of that. I used to uh, sit at home and I'd be painting uh, for, for, for no, no particular reason, but I, I just loved doing it. And I would sit up until about three in the morning just painting. And I, and I did that for three or four years, maybe more. And, and in that time, I just got better and better at art, as, as you would do. And so I, I now teach, uh, I, I teach art. I, um, what else do I do? I write children's books. I, you name it, I'll do, I, I, I do anything. A bit of an art gypsy, really. Look at that. Uh, but uh, were you ever a cartoon uh, fan? No, no, no. But I've, I've known, I've worked with people who are, I, I know some very good artists and uh, who are very, you can't be all things to all men. No. Uh, and I, I, I'll hold my hand up and say, I'm not, I'm not a particularly good drawer, but I, I can paint. Okay. And what about this storytelling? Where does it come from? Were you ever that, told? That, 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 that just comes naturally to me. That, that just, I, I've done that all my life. Uh, John's, John Spencer's uh, son, young son, uh, his, he is my, I'm his godfather. And okay. when I, when we used to go away on holiday, I used to send him, uh, I'd send him a, a postcard of where we were and there'd be a story on it. I'd write a story about, you know, uh, if we went to Scotland and we went to a place called Loch Trool or somewhere like that, it'd be the, a story of the ghoul of Loch Trool. And, and we, yeah, I've always done it. I've always done it. Good. I think Dave, that... Dave knows I've always done it, and uh -huh. it's just, it's just, it's, uh, and, uh, and I've always done it, and and I've kind of developed it, you know, from there. All right, I and, and still, and still, am developing it, really. Good. Yeah. Good. Now, what about David? Uh, I read that uh, during the time that there was a pause, uh, it was a long pause in the Castanac story. You you participated in a, in different projects. Uh, I don't know if other music bands, maybe. Oh, um, not really. Uh, the the polls I think you take you talk talking about. It took eight years to do to write Little Gods. Um, that was a big built a studio in the back mm. of my house because uh, we knew it was going to be a a long a long project. We were trying to deal with technology a, a bit like that, so. It just well, it drove me batty, I think. It drove me crackers um, writing it, um, Little Gods. But um, that, that, to, write an, for an, to write an album that takes eight years, it takes it out of you. And once we'd finished, I didn't really have much left, left to say, to be honest. Um, so that was a sabbatical as much as anything. I didn't do much for for a while, really. It wasn't until we we got back together much later. We've we've always, even when we weren't doing anything in the band, we would always meet up and we went off and played five aside football for a while. But every time we played, Mark would come around, we'd sit down at the piano, and we'd sing some songs, and I'd play, and we'd just sing along. So we were always together, um, but we just weren't writing for the band. And then I think uh, I did a couple of productions for a couple of people, just just really to keep my hand in. And then um, 
when lockdown had we just before lockdown happened we just had a meeting and i turned around to john and uh, mark and said do you fancy doing another cast and arc album and we agreed we'd do it and mark and i had a couple of meetings we sat down and just doodled through a few ideas and then we, got, we bang, actually got coronavirus we, we actually started it yeah, yeah we, started we started it just before coronavirus uh before the pandemic and we we i think we'd written about four four or five songs three or four four or five one of those yeah but... uh and and we we all we'd done is we'd um we'd sang them around the piano and that was all we'd, we'd got s- some words that were just that would that would help us along and then we uh, when the pandemic hit David realised all of a sudden, I'm sat at home, I've got a studio here, I might as well do something. So that's what, that's what he did. So piece the rest of it together and then we were just... We couldn't, we couldn't meet because of the restrictions. Yeah, it was interesting. Through all. We, I, was, I was sending, I was doing some work and then I'd send it for Mark to listen to. And then I'd send it to John electronically, it'd all go off and John would put it into his computer, into the studio. And then the first thing we did with um, the Sea of Broken Vows, once we got the tracks, is we sent it to Charlie, uh, Charlie Morgan in... Um, Drummer. Yeah, in, um, oh, Tennessee. Uh, Memphis, Tennessee. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, out, it was out there. Um, we'd sent him that, and then he'd record the drums in his studio, and the drums would come back. So once the drums came back, we thought, oh, well, Blow this, we, we sent it off to the bass player next, and then it said, just, it's, so it just each time we sent it off to a different musician, it came back and it, it reinvigorated us. It's like, Whoa, wow, great, you know. And we just and on, we it just, went. on it went Until, every, every time, every every musician, it just changed it. The studio is a professional studio, so it could open it opened up before quite a lot of places. Um, so Mark could then get in with John. And actually record the vocals so all the vocals were done at the end except for one one we'd done in my place yes yes so we had different laws going off here different you were allowed to do certain things and it hit again and then you would so it was all messing about but that's how um sea of broken vows was recorded it was recorded we, we didn't bump into charlie to talk to him we've, we we've never met we've never met our drummer. No, never um, met him. We have, we have met the bass player. Uh, could, could you, uh, what's the name of the bass player, by the way? Could you mention him? Uh, Peter, P- Robinson. Peter Robinson. Okay. Pete Robinson, as he likes to be known. And he played He played on um, Rue Politics. He did, yeah. In fact, he played oh, uh, the Ch- Children Won't Eat. He played Children Okay, Eat. okay. Now, I read that you, you once recorded or played with a drummer that used to play with a band that I really love and played a lot on radio here with uh, the Cocktail Twins, Vincenzo Lamy. Is that oh, so? Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm a Vincenzo, big fan. Vincenzo, Vincenzo Lamy. <laughs> <laughs> when? when? Vincenzo, uh-huh. been around, Vinny did Little Gods. So he, did ah, it. he okay. recorded Little Gods when I had the studio in my, in my house and we set up the drums, but he was recording with. Take, would he take that or Robbie Williams? He was recording with one of those. So he was doing Top of the Pops. We had a pro, we got a radio program, a TV program here, or we had called Top of the Pops. <laughs> and Vinny was going down and doing recordings for that and then coming through and doing the drums for. Um, yeah, he was staying, he was staying, same weekend. Was he? Yeah, he'd come over and stay over and we recorded him like that. Um, for Little God, so he did all the drums on Little Gods. But he was he then he was going off and doing Cocteau Twins, and I think he played with Brian May. And when was uh, that? When uh, 19, 19, the mid nineties might have been because okay. Cocteau, the Cocteau Twins last album came out like in the mid nineties, ninety four, ninety five. Yeah, I don't know whether he was recording or he was certainly touring with them. All right, and he was uh, he was touring with. Um, Spice Girls, or in or fact, I, I remember Jerry seeing Hayward. him. I, I remember seeing him on uh, on a top of the pops with uh, the cocktails. Wow, was it at that? Mm. Uh-huh. Yeah, and I think that yeah. you also you also work with a guy from ABC, Rob Clark. Is that so? Yeah, Rob, Rob, uh, yeah, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> we, so did, we played in we played in Hollywood. Twenty, we used to call him Twenty. Fabulous musician. Yeah, I'll uh, tell you why. He's an absolutely fabulous musician. And uh, we 
we've, he's Sheffield based, as is Steve Baden. Sack playing. So, yeah. who's played with us a few times. Um, and he's another one that goes off session to session musicians for all sorts of people. And um, I think Rob Clark wrote um, Week in the Presence of Beauty for Alison Alice Moyer. Moyer. He picked that up. Mm. But we played in Holland with him. So, and Steve. So we took the band cast out, went over to Holland and played in Tilburg. And we did a gig there with him. It was great. It was excellent. Now, uh, th there, was, uh, there were some plans uh, for releasing an album uh, with recordings from the BBC, I read. And uh, there was one show that you did for the Classic Rock Society back in 99. But yeah. then that uh, just disappeared. I mean, it never happened. Uh, that, seems that, that, that show, that was, um, you remember we were talking about uh, Steve Ackie, we were recording, sure, uh, yes. rehearsing, and, ah. and in, in the that back, was, that was the show, that Steve, was the Ackie, show. Steve Ackie, okay. was, that was okay. the one. Uh -huh. the, uh, the, the, I, I, my question goes to, I haven't been able to find any live performances on YouTube. I mean, uh, I don't know how often you used to play live, really. Uh, live playing, live playing. And if you have well, any, any, if you have any recordings of that, we'll no, we no, no, no. There is, there is a bootleg because I've been sent a bootleg from Holland. Okay. Of a gig we did in Holland. I've, I've heard that bootleg. In fact, I've got a copy of it, but um, it was just recorded with a guy with a microphone. Ah, okay. Two thousand people I think uh -huh. in the but we never went out of our way to um, film or record live we were always happier in the studio we used to play live we I think it what happened was we, because we're 16 years old or whatever it was when we started playing we were playing working men's clubs to start with and because and it's these, all all we knew all we knew these were hard environments these mm. were these were good learning the the Playing um, behind chicken wire and yeah, we've like done that. that. <laughs> so we've, we've actually done that in some of them, like the, the Blues Brothers. Yeah, that sort of thing. <laughs> we've done that, and um, these these are hard places to play. And you mm. soon, if you get the opportunity to not do it, you take it. And then it was only we then cherry picked. If we were invited to do something, we'd do it. And if we were invited to do something again, we'd we'd probably do it. Mm. But we te we tend to. We tend to be happiest in the recording studio. We, uh, I think, I think we're, uh, we were very fortunate when we met John, very fortunate. And, and, and I think it's, that's a two way thing because he, he also feels fortunate when he met us as well, because we allowed him to do things that he had never done before, uh, but he had the uh, a facility there that we could use and we were we were so pleased that we could use it uh, and sort of the 80s were were a great time because it was a learning curve for for both myself and Dave but it was also a, a learning curve for John as well uh, and we just got it we just got richer and richer as a result of that and I think and I think we we will always be you know we will always do that we, we who knows I'm, I'm not i'm not going to ever rule out that we will never do live because maybe we would and maybe we'd be quite good as well because we we'd certainly get good good players around us mm. um sure you do yeah but we we certainly don't have any uh we don't have any idea you know uh tours in the plant you know in planning at the moment uh, who knows? Are, who knows? There, are there any festivals i mean I, i've seen many posters of festivals going around in europe and everywhere and sorry, reuniting again and playing after all these terrible years. Uh, have you have you been invited to any of those festivals? I mean, one in yeah. one in we have one yeah. in New York. One in was it New York? Yeah. One in, one was in New York and one was and, and there was also another one in down in London, wasn't there? Yeah, I think so. Uh, which we haven't taken we haven't taken up. But who knows? Who know, we're not in a position at this moment in time to be able to do that. But but who knows? You know, uh, we, we, we're doing a new album now, which will be totally different to all the other albums. Uh, It'll have also. But, it, it, but you'll, hello. You're yeah. Gone. Uh, I'm still yeah. here. 
Yeah. Yeah. So we are we're recording in URL. Well, we're we're writing at the minute. So we're writing okay. in URL. Uh huh. Uh, and we're, we're we're hoping that this album, instead of the others have gone on to CD, we're we're thinking about just releasing this on vinyl this time. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to it because uh, when I first, uh, one of the reasons I got into art was through looking at uh, LP covers. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. and the, the, the gate, gate folds and, and the, uh, yeah. certainly all the ones that Yes used to do and the, and yeah. the uh, Eliza Sunny Low and, and all those things. The, 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 the artwork was superb and, and yeah. you don't get that anymore. You don't get that on a CD. Yeah, you get, uh, you get that on an LP. The only the, oh, I'm looking forward to that. The only problem that I see on vinyl, I'm a big record collector, uh, but uh, they become so expensive these days, and they are getting more and more expensive. Yeah. Uh, well, they they are to create as well. It will yeah. come out on vinyl, but it will come out on CD. Yeah, and it will come out. It will be streamed as well. But uh -huh. initially, it, the hope is that it will be a vinyl release to start with. Oh, There'll be so many, so many copies. Okay. Released as vinyl. Was Root Politics ever released on vinyl or any of the other previous albums? Politics. Um, both Politics. Politics was released on vinyl. Oh. And so was RCA released Politics. Yes, well, you've got a copy of it. Yeah. Uh, Politics was released on vinyl, and so was um, Journey to the Journey to the East was released on vinyl, uh, and so know. was um, the um, This Island Love. They're all vinyl. And and the first uh, the first song was the this, this island love was also a single record I guess a a, a maxi single. Yeah, it was a twelve inch and a seven inch single. Uh huh. Okay. Now, uh, uh, what what do you think about these new platforms? The people used to listen to music, Spotify and all that. Do they contribute or do they spoil the development of independent musicians? Like yourself? they are they are great as a they they're not great for money. That's, no. that's I think that's pretty well documented. Um, just, but as a tool, you know, to Come as on. a technology, the, the problem with them is 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 the it's it's a consumerism thing in the in that um, you put a, an album out and then you want another one uh, ten minutes later. Or the, the, the so it's out uh, and it, it it's like a it's a big wolf. That, that it was everything. The other thing is, they're not the quality of them is you know, you're listening through ear pods or whatever, the compressed. The, you know, we go to a lot of trouble to make everything we record the very best we can make it at that time, and mm. then it comes out on a streaming service and you just lose it, gets reduced. Yeah, yeah, it's just compressed yeah. to hell. So uh -huh. sometimes I think, what's the point? Right, but, but kids these days, uh, so young, young musicians, they, they listen to it on phones, uh, uh, and that's that's how they that's how they consume it. And well, I do, I I do not. I still listen to it on. You know, yeah, on, yeah, absolutely. If you want to listen, if you want to enjoy the music as it's, then I like to listen to. It. I still like to listen to records on vinyl, but I don't knock the tools that are available in modern technology. We've been dealing with modern technology all our lives, mm -hmm. and moving on. And Amazon and Spotify are, are, no, are no different. How they people listen to music today is how they listen to music today. But I keep buying cassettes now. Right. Who'd have thought that'd come back? Yeah, that's weird. I don't know. I don't understand. That is why. weird. Yeah. I, I. I mean, I used to tape great things from radio back in when I was in school. Uh, yeah. And the only way I could do it was on a tape, and they were very good tape, quality tapes. But uh, a comeback, I don't understand the comeback because uh, I, it's so inferior to what you get today, even in MP3. Uh, well, it's my opinion. I don't know. Well, John was saying they got they got plant. We got plants at this recording studio, and at the moment, all it's pressing is cassette tapes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. They're, they're very popular at the moment. Yeah. I I, I remember when way back in. When we used to visit the studio all the time, uh, Dave and I, we, we were like, like on a night shift. We'd go in really late, wouldn't we? We did, yeah. <laughs> we'd go in, the, the, somebody in during the day, and then we'd go in at night. So, uh, and we used to, we used to love going home with, we'd all we'd go home with a cassette. Uh, and then we'd play it in the car on the way home, listening to, to what we'd done that night. 
and happy days, happy days. <laughs> Never saw daylight for a month. Yeah. <laughs> now, two more things. Uh, um, I'd like to hear something about, I'm not sure if that's the right pronunciation, Galwick and the Sunset. Oh. Yeah, I've been reading about hey. that too. This fellow. Yeah, is that it? Oh, well, that's it. Yeah, that's 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 him. Okay. Uh, Go look in the sunset. It's a story I wrote. I, I, I went to um, to the Shetland Isles, and it's based in the Shetland. The Shetland Isles are a very small, tiny group of islands at the at the north at north of Scotland, the the furthest north in Britain you can go. And I wrote uh, whilst I was up there, I was doing uh, an exhibition. Uh, and whilst I was doing the exhibition, uh, I came up with an idea for a little character. Uh, so that's what it is. He's, he's, a, he's a little, he's a, what's called a trow. So I suppose a, a, a troll in, uh -huh. in Norwegian. Uh, and he's a, a little character that looks after, he looks after the, uh, the oceans that surround um, Britain. So he's the, he's the fella. Uh, so Gullwick and the Sunset, he, he, the story, he goes out looking for a sunset because he needs to get the colours off the sea from the sunset and he gathers them in his barrels. This is what this, story, this painting is. And then from there, he then goes and finds some puffins and young puffins, when they're, when they're young, they have just um, these black grey beaks he paints their their beaks the colours that they are, the bright colours that they are, and that's that's what the story is. And David and I, well, David wrote a, he wrote a song. We we, we decided to do a little um, a short video of it, so it's about half an hour long. Uh, and David did the music for it, and and I I sang on it, and and I loved what he did absolutely adored the piano stuff that he did on it but it was only on the on the video it was only the chorus that um appeared and it wasn't until later uh when we did uh, the fairview 50 did you were you aware of the fairview 50 50 year anniversary thing uh we did that and we were asked to do a song for that and so we we wrote the the verse mm. as well to, to go with the to go with the chorus. Steve can play sax. Yeah, I, I think this short film is available on YouTube. But is it going to be available in any sort of? I mean, when you release, I, I mean, maybe a CD with an, an extra disc or something. How how can we access access the? the Who knows? Who what, knows? Are you talking uh, about Goldwick? You're talking yeah, about yeah. Goldwick? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. Goldwick's yes. on DVD. Goldwick's on. Yeah, it is on DVD. Oh. Oh. So it is on DVD, but it's all sat in my garage, okay. <laughs> doing nothing at the moment. <laughs> but the song okay. itself is on. Um, it's on we, that fifty-year. It's also on a. It's on um, Water from the Well. So yes, it's on a it's on a CD called Water from the Well, which we yeah, yeah. Have, you, have you have you heard that one? Uh, not completely. I, I I confess I must sit down and listen to the last two albums. Uh, uh, but I found some there's, amazing there's songs. There's two songs on that from the Goldwick. Okay, okay. Now, uh, Ooh, this, this is a strange well, question, maybe. Shall I, turn a, shall I turn a light on? Yeah, please. <laughs> Who are you? I, I can't see you. No, I can't. Whoa, whoa, I'm blind now. It's okay. <laughs> now, now, the Galway looks really great. And the, the, the fact that he's taking the colors of the sunset, to me, Mark and David, the sunset is really what I call the yellow hour. For me, it's always been magical. And I can't, you know, having stayed there for my whole life, observing is so magical. And, and luckily, these days, people are all day looking at their cell phones and they miss so much around them. So I think that's what you get. That's the inspiration you get. And you have this um, talent to, you know, uh, I don't know, maybe you put it in your mind and then you give an output of this fantastic painting. That's it's really amazing. Uh, oh, thank you very much. Yeah. Very much. I, I, I totally enjoy my life. Totally, I mean, uh, you know, I've understated it there. I, I love my life. I love what I do. 
and I love doing what I do. Yeah, that's very lucky because, yeah, you know, there are some people that really uh, have a hard time. So you, you're very lucky. You make music that makes so many people happy and, you know, the music uh, put people together uh, in a magic way. One final question. Do you have <laughs> any personal vows you have ever broken? What's the concept behind the album? <laughs> oh, well, okay. Broken all of the sea of broken vows. <laughs> Well, I Sorry, next question. <laughs> no, uh, I mean maybe maybe you can think about the question like, have you still do you still have anything that you would like to 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 get to achieve something that you would like to, uh, yeah, like pending <laughs> goals that? stuff like that? I don't know. Oh, I think till the end of our lives, I'm sure we will. Absolutely. We, we, uh, there, there's always new vistas and new, and new things to do and. And new new ways of approaching things. Uh huh. Yeah. There's many many things, uh, but I couldn't I couldn't put my finger on them. Um, I'd like to write some more books. I'd like to. Uh, I'd like David and I will carry on writing albums till we're in, in the grave. Expect one. Expect one <laughs> as we're in the grave from through the ether. Just okay. And what about the book, the, the distribution of the book? Is that easy? Is that an easy job? Uh... The, the, the book was manufactured by myself. I, I made it myself. I, I, what I wanted to do was I wanted to do absolutely everything in the process. So I wanted to do purely from a uh, mother of necessity, you know, mother, mothering invention. Okay. A necessity and all that. Okay. Um, so I wanted to learn how to manufacture books. Okay. I wanted to. In fact, I've got a copy here. So, so this is a copy of the book. Oh, look at that! Okay. I just see you. Oh, wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I can. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. And if, if 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 any of the viewers of the Castaner fans would like to get one copy, where can they, they go to they, get they it? Can, at this moment in time, they can't. Uh, but I, uh, purely because uh, I've run it, I've sold out. Uh, uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to I am going to reprint it again. Okay. So that, there's that picture there. That's that one. Look at that. It's like a, it's, that, that looks like a gramophone thing. That, the the previous one. That one, oh. yeah, it is. Yes, he's, he's what he's oh. doing is he's, he's calling the puffins. To come Look at to that. <laughs> so that, they're the puffins there. Fantastic! Oh, congrats! Amazing! It looks amazing. I like to see it one day. Yeah, good. Well, maybe, maybe. Why not? Uh, uh -huh. It is. It is in the. It is in the pipeline to to redo. Okay. Yeah. Good. To redo it. Okay. Well, uh, David and Mark. Thank you so much for your time, the generosity, the interest. I really uh, find amazing that technology allows me to make contact with people like you because uh, back in the mid 80s when I was discovering your music, it was just a record. You, I mean, there was no, no possibility of uh, getting any, anything else but the music from the people who were making that music, but now you can learn about incredible uh, things and interesting aspects of the music and you understand the music much better after such a conversation so thank you thank you and uh, i'd like to ask you before we cut off uh, i'm going to play some some of your music soon on my there's an online radio station uh, that belongs to a friend of mine an ex-radio colleague and the name of my show it's concert 22 which in spanish is Concierto 22. So maybe you don't mind uh, giving me an ID. Uh, both of you, like you say your names, something like, uh, uh, let me show it to you. Uh, it's a, um, what are they call ops. Can, can, can you see this? Hello, yes. I am, and I am, and we want to invite you to listen to our music on Concierto 22. That's all. You identify yourselves. Could, is that possible? Yeah, we can do that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now or? Um, yeah. yeah. You want me to go first? Yeah. <laughs> oh, 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 I see. I see. 
I'm going to do it together. So, okay. So, hi, I'm David Powell from Castanark, and this is Mark Holliday from Castanark. I'm the singer, and we'd like to invite you to listen to some Castanark music on Concerto del Go. Del... Right. Well, should we do it again? Should Twenty-two again? Concerto Twenty-two. Right. right. Concerto Twenty-two. So, shall I do that again? Well, I'll do that again. <laughs> right. One right. more. Sorry. Thing. Hi, I'm David Powell from Castanark, and this is Mark Holliday. I'm the singer. Dave's the keyboard player. We'd like to invite you to listen to some cast art music on Concierto 22. Excellent. <laughs> Congrats. Well done. Thank you so much for your time. Hope this is not the last time we have the thank chance you. to talk. Thank you for your interest, Christian. Yes, no, thank, thank you, you very much. much. It's nice, it's nice to meet. It's nice to meet someone who's yeah. a genuine fan. Thank you very much. Thank so you much. very much. Uh, you don't know how much it means to us. Oh, whoa, well. well. You know, likewise. Uh, sorry if it's too late there. I it's still five to four here. What time is it there? Five to eleven. Uh, half past eight. Okay. Just, just getting dark. Okay. Keep working. Keep uh, uh, stay alive. Take care. And, and the same to you. The yeah. Okay. Time. Thanks a lot. It was Bye. lovely to meet you. Meet you, Christian. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>